Hi guys, um, so today I'm going to show you how to recreate this uh, sort of content slider for your portfolios on Webflow. Uh, this is available as a clonable uh, project from my profile. If you just follow all the links uh, in the description below, you can go there and clone it. So today I'm basically going to show you how to do this. Uh, basically what it is, is a nice way to display some projects uh, on a horizontal slider. Um, with customizable um, slider at the bottom here and also support for people that use um, the traditional mouse with a kind of mouse wheel, scrolly wheel on it instead of a laptop track pad, trackpad sorry. Um, and also it will be responsive so you'll be able to uh, view your projects on your tablets, iPhones, whatever. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, uh, they've got their projects laid out horizontally with the scroll um, and then once you click on the video, it obviously plays. Now they're, they're obviously using their own um, HTML5 uh, custom player. What, what I'm going to show you how to do is um, embed uh, a Vimeo or YouTube player using the CMS. And we're going to do it all with a dynamic list uh, and two pieces of jQuery. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So this is what I've recreated in um, Webflow. Obviously, uh, different size thumbnails. Um, there's a bit of meta information down here. You can add as much or as little as you want. I've just added that for now. And then if you click on the project, there's the video. There's a little button to go back. It just takes you back to the uh, project page and uh, is the YouTube embed as well. So yeah, really useful. Hopefully uh, you'll like this, uh, give it a like, clone it, share it. Uh, follow me on Webflow as well uh, for future tutorials like this. Right, let's get going. So um, I've already set everything up in, in the actual project. Um, I'm not gonna go it from the start to finish. Um, I'm literally just going to go through what, what we've got here and just kind of break it down for you so you have an understanding of what's happening. Um, you know, obviously you can clone this and use this in your own projects um, and, you know, customize it, do whatever you want with it. It doesn't just have to be for videos, it could be for articles, it could be for, you know, images, whatever you want to do. Okay, so what I've done is I've added in a dynamic list uh, and then connect the, the uh, the collection to that. Um, you'll see here in the collections the fields that I've given it. So uh, obviously the name, the product main image, that will be the thumbnail, and then YouTube video ID and Vimeo video ID. So I'm just going to explain this really quickly um, because I know that, our, that there is a field for video um, that you could use, but the problem, and, and it does embed the video just fine, the problem with it is that um, is that basically Webflow don't give you control over uh, the APIs for YouTube or uh, Vimeo, so you can't do things like auto playing, like we saw in ours, or uh, you know customize the the look of the iframe players. Um, obviously, you don't have to have both YouTube and video Vimeo video IDs um, if you're just using YouTube or just Vimeo, whatever you want to use. Uh, but I've included both of those there. And I've also included the embed code, um, which I will show you. So basically just skipping ahead of time a bit. I'm just going to go into the projects template. So um, you can see here that I've um, just put some embed code. Uh, I've also played around with the actual Vimeo player. Um, you, you can see after the Vimeo video ID uh, that it says auto play. Uh, things like that, you know, you can change the color. If, if you go to vimeo.com uh, and go to embed one of their videos, I think it's in the, after a share button or something, uh, then you can kind of just play around with the options there. Um, you can also see here that I've done some conditional visibility. So if you were to click on the Vimeo embed, for instance, um, we'll add a condition uh, that it will only show when someone's inputted um, the data into the Vimeo video ID in the collection and I've done the same again for YouTube as well. 
Okay, so we're just going to look at the, um, the div tree here for the dynamic list. Um, the most important one to name correctly is this one, uh, project-list-wrap, uh, just because that's where the jQuery is going to apply itself to. Um, other than that, you can kind of name these wherever you want. I've just kind of gone down in the same vein and named them. And then if we have a look at the styles, uh, it's kind of some just simple stuff, overflow, scroll, position, relative, um, project list. This is using uh, Flexbox. Um, so I've just applied that. It's going horizontally uh, and just relative. And then what's really important is once you do the flex box, uh, straight away it's going to default to this one, which is shrink if needed, uh, where it's just going to shrink to the container width. What we want to do is don't shrink, and then we can set the width of the uh, actual project item here. So we could have it, we could have it whatever we want really. So it could be, for instance, twenty VWs. It could be, uh, you know, five hundred. 500 pixels, however you want to do it. Um, I've just kind of gone for the uh, view window. Cool, and then you can also set the height, uh, whatever height you want it to be, it doesn't really matter. Um, I've just set it to 100 because I think that looks quite nice. Uh, and it will still work. So play around with that. And then Within the project item, I've got the project link. And what's going on here? That's just width 100%, height 100%. Not too much going on there. Change the color of the text. And then I've got a project thumbnail. Again, 100%, 100%. And then I've included the uh, background image here, linked it to the dynamic list. The dynamic collection, sorry, uh, here, which is the product, project main image. And then the project meta, which is absolute positioned within that div. So remember, if you're absolute positioning something, uh, the parent needs to be uh, relative position. So the parent is project link, and you can see it's relative. This is absolute positioned. For some reason it's not showing up there, not sure why, but it should be. Um, yeah, and then I've positioned it right to the bottom, added a bit of padding, and added in just a heading. But again, you can add in however much or as low as you want here. You could add like the publish date, for instance, maybe a category. You're going to be using those, um, whatever you want to do, and just play around with it. Um, so the only other thing I'm doing here as well is when you hover over the project item, I'm just doing this kind of little bit of an animation. So I'll show you how to quickly do that as well. So basically whenever someone hovers over the project link, we're going to do this project item hover. Set up the trigger. So I've gone uh, trigger hover. And then it's going to affect a different element. So I want to affect the project thumbnail and I want that to scale. And I also want the opacity to increase to 70%. Because at the moment, I've uh, you, you can kind of see it, there's like kind of a blue tint for the photos to make the uh, text stand out. I've basically just gone to the thumbnail, turn the opacity down to, I think, 50%. So when we hover over it, it's going to bring it up to 70%. And then when we hover out, it's going to go back down to 50% and scale back to 1%. And then what's also really important here is to limit to nested elements. If you don't do this, then whenever you whenever you hover over one item, it's going to do put that animation across all of them. So if I just unclick that for now, I'll show you what I mean. There we go. So it's going to kind of be a bit buggy. So link. You need to limit to nested elements. Um, okay, and then the last thing I was do, working on with this is on the project list, when it goes down to a tablet or mobile phone, um, we want it to break and then kind of just be a vertical scroll because it's, it's just better UX, I think. 
and it's all I've done there is just on the Flexbox setting, I've just gone down to direction column instead of direction row. And then I've also gone through and just added a few other bits, um, width, auto, height, 50 bh, but again, this could be 100 bh if you wanted it to just span the whole tablet or whatever. So I'm just doing 50 because it's a signifier that there's more content to scroll without having to use an arrow. And that's pretty much it for how everything's set up within this. So now I'm going to show you um, how to implement uh, the Java, the, the jQuery, sorry. I'll kind of just show you what's going on here. So we're using two pieces of jQuery. Uh, or two jQuery plugins, sorry. Uh, one is the mouse wheel plugin, and that's going to let users uh, scroll left or right if they're using a uh, traditional kind of mouse with a scroll wheel on it. So when they go up and down, it goes left and right. Um, and then also an another thing to mention here as well, just for um, you know, kind of cross compatibility, is uh, you know if if someone can't scroll up or down or left or right, they can always click and drag as well. So. I think we're kind of covering all the bases there in terms of UX. Uh, and then, yeah, the where the magic's happening is this JS scroll pane uh, script here. Um, you can see what I've done here is loaded it onto my Dropbox, and then I've basically just copied the public link and pasted it in here. Uh, and then it's just going to pull all of that, um, all of that uh, JavaScript, basically, and make it work. Uh, what I will do is provide the link provide the links to download the jQuery from my own Dropbox that you can then upload to your own Google Drive or Dropbox and then uh, basically paste it in yourself. Um, the reason you should do that is basically if I actually, if I accidentally um, delete the files on my Dropbox or something gets moved, then these links are going to be broken, uh, which means it's going to affect your website. So just host it on your own hosting system, whether it's Dropbox, Google Drive, on a server, wherever. Um, okay, cool. So then basically what's happening is this is just um, doing some stuff basically using the mouse wheel plugin. Uh, it's targeting the project dash list dash wrap. That's the important one to name correctly. Uh, again, change this to whatever you want, but I mean, you don't necessarily have to. And then this is just calling up again, um, this the JS scroll pane plugin, uh, and it's targeting the project dash list dash wrap. And then it's basically um, adding the, this uh, scroll bar at the bottom and it's connecting it to the div so you can scroll. And then the last little thing I've done, um, this is just a bit extra, but basically uh, on Google Chrome and I think I think Safari, but uh, you, I know you can't change this on Firefox, but basically on Google Chrome you can. Um, if I was to take this out, um, save that publish you can see that basically when you hover over a link Google Chrome will add a link preview in the bottom left corner of the browser you can just see it here under my uh, cursor basically that's kind of you know breaking the design it makes it look a bit ugly um, so basically to get rid of that uh, I've just added in that piece of script so those changes and then publish. Refresh. And now that's gone. Cool. And that's all there is to it. Again, if, if you want to delve deeper, um, you know, change a few things, customize the, um, the scroll bar down here, all you have to do is kind of, um, you know, change some of the options in the CSS. Uh, so this is the CSS that's kind of um, styling that scroll bar. Uh, if you wanted to change the color, for instance, uh, I think, yeah, so this is the the drag, or what they're calling the drag. And you can see I've given that a nice red. And then the background, I've given that a kind of dark gray. You can change that. Uh, you could also, for instance, uh, make make it taller. So you could make it uh, you know, however tall you want it to be. Um, that's pretty much that all there is to that. Um, there's more kind of documentation on the JS Payne uh, website. If you just Google that, you'll find that 
Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, that, that's it for today. So um, yeah, get cloning. Make sure to leave a like on the video. Um, subscribe to this channel for more tutorials. And uh, yeah, leave a like on the Webflow page as well if you want. Thanks a lot.